Yes, okay. Uh, my name is Maria and I'm very happy to represent uh, now a team, uh, analysis team that is composed by uh, Pamela Kampa and Elena Palzela, who are here, my colleagues from site. Also, Solomia Spak, who is from KAC, and uh, Maria Crumina and Anna Pruta, who are from Biceps in Latvia. And we are studying uh, legislation. So domestic violence legislation is quite recent, uh, as we see from this uh, plot of the number of countries that do have any uh, provisions specifically addressing domestic violence. It was basically a rarity in, until the 80s, uh, but then during the last four decades, things really have happened at the fast pace. So many countries have introduced a lot of different uh, legislation covering different aspects of preventing, uh, protecting against and prosecuting various forms of domestic violence and abuse that, that might happen within a marriage or within a family. And uh, research, of which we heard a, a bunch of examples in the, in the first session this day, really strives to keep up with uh, evaluating which measures are the most uh, effective, what details matter, in a context where statistics and data are very uh, limited. So I have a lot of, there, there's a lot of issues there to, to really be able to study this. Uh, over this period, even norms are changed. This uh, picture is not based on our survey. This is based on the DHS, which is one of the most commonly used sources of data about uh, domestic violence and uh, attitudes towards this. Uh, so this here, the takeaway from this picture is basically that the red dot is, uh, so the, the dark dot is almost always to the left of the red dot. And this, so this shows that the share of uh, um, respondents that agree to the statement that domestic violence is justified in some situations have decreased over time. There are exceptions, but it's a positive trend. Anyway, but what is the link between legislation and behavior? Maybe going through norms. So legislation may have an effect on behavior, so on actual violence, uh, on one hand, because it affects the cost. It affects the benefit of reporting it, of seeking help. Or it can be that through a more indirect way, it changes norms in society. Uh, and, but whatever the channel is, uh, we have to recognize that awareness of legislation is key here, because how can deterrence happen if people do not know what sanctions are? How can reporting be encouraged if victims do not know what help is available? Uh, so, and how can norms change? Norms change if this is not, I mean, people are not aware um, about what, uh, what is acceptable or not, what is a crime or not. And actually a survey of the criminology literature uh, reveals that this is a big knowledge gap. So we don't know a lot about what drives uh, awareness of legislation. Uh, so this is one thing that we want to contribute to. So in the survey, uh, we ask, Two questions to all respondents across all countries that are general to go their opinion, opinion of the, of the respondents about the need for specific domestic violence legislation, uh, intimate partner violence legislation, uh, and also about awareness. So whether they're aware that legislation exists in their countries or not. Uh, and so from these figures, we can see that uh, support is quite high, even though it's lower for men and particularly in some of the countries, but awareness is quite low. So we should, we should stress here that there is actually some uh, provision about domestic violence in all these countries, but less than half of population in, in some places, much less than half uh, are even aware of this. Uh, yes. Then in three countries, we also asked more specific questions about a reform that happened recently in their country. 
Uh, and the idea here is that uh, if a reform happened recently, probably there, there has been a debate, there has been more um, information in the media and so on, so people should be more aware. Uh, these reforms are uh, in chronological order uh, in, happened in Russia in 2017, in Ukraine in 2019, and in Latvia just a few months ago. At the time of the survey, it was uh, only at the proposal stage. Okay, so we, uh, these are more than the, in detail the questions. So we asked whether uh, people have heard about the reform, first of all. Uh, and then we asked also a multiple choice question about the content, whether people know just in broad terms if the reform strengthen or weaken the punishment or neither. And then in Latvia, uh, since this was a different reform, it was about the right of the police to separate victim and uh, perpetrator uh, without an application from the victim um, so we and it was not it had not been implemented yet so we only asked about expectations so whether uh, people would be expected a reduction in, in violence from this an important reduction a slight reduction or no reduction at all okay uh, so we said we, we expect that being a recent reform, the people will be more aware, but we find actually that awareness about reform is, is quite low. And even lower is the knowledge about the detail, the content of the reform is actually very low. Okay, then we try to explain um, as support and awareness on the basic of the basis of some uh, socioeconomic characteristics many of these you have already seen in the previous two studies uh, so one point to stress is that why we think that this is interesting we think that analysis of uh, what groups of people are more or less aware or supportive of domestic legislation can help target interventions can help motivate and target so uh, if we see that people that would most uh, need protection are less aware of what instruments are available, then this is a motivation to uh, like campaign, information campaigns or some kind of spread of information. We have seen a lot of them during the pandemic. And once we decide that we want to increase information, we want to do these drives, then it's useful to know which people uh, are uh, more in, in need of targeting for this information. Okay, so uh, just briefly an overview of the results. Of course, there is no time to present all, the, all and discuss all of the details, but uh, in short, our analysis suggests that gender and family situation, so in terms of marital status and presence of children, are the two main factors that most robustly predict support of legislation. Sometimes, in some countries, it goes in different directions. So here there are interesting discussions about why, uh, for example, being uh, divorced or separated can lead in one direction or another in different countries. We, we see here uh, the um, divorced um, coefficient, for example, is negative in Latvia and positive in Russia. Uh, and then uh, when it comes to awareness, Education and age are the factors most associated with awareness and knowledge of the reform. Um, while we see that women that were more supportive are also less informed. Um, some other uh, interesting uh, effects here are the, uh, for example, the minority Russian speakers, both in uh, uh, Ukraine and Latvia are less aware and less informed about the reform. Uh, this might have to do with the fact that they follow different media or are not very interested in the, necessarily interested in the legislation in the country, at least for the case of Latvia. Um, and um, uh, then the, the experiences and attitudes are also very important. So people that are more aware of, uh, or have observed discrimination of women or uh, are also more supportive of legislation, more aware of the reform and more well-informed. Uh, while the people that have all this attitude that IPV is a private matter for the family, they are less supportive and less aware, less knowledgeable, which is not surprising. Um, this is a plot of the expectation in Latvia, but 
just in the well, it's, it's basically the same, the same factors that also drive um, higher expectations for the effect of the reforms in Latvia. Uh, so concluding, information and awareness about legislation on domestic violence are crucial to shape norms and behavior and eventually the occurrence of violence. And these studies uh, that uh, try to understand how well known and how well understood legislation is in the population are important for policy because they can motivate and target interventions. Uh, and to summarize, in our three countries of interest, men, married people, younger courts, and less educated uh, people are less well informed, and also the minority speakers in the, in, in the case of Latvia and um, Ukraine. So this is a very short summary. And <laughs> We can, uh, we have some time for the discussion. Thank you.